Today on the Tech Bytes podcast, we're having a security conversation, specifically security fabrics or security mesh architectures. That is, you get an integrated set of products that work together to help you manage risk in the network or on endpoints and do things like improve detection and response. Our sponsor today is Fortinet. We're talking with Stephen Watkins. He is Director of Systems Engineering at Fortinet. Stephen, welcome to the podcast. And so just give us a basic overview. What is Fortinet Security Fabric? They're making an argument that they have a security fabric that's better than just standalone devices. What does that mean? Yeah, thanks. It's a it's a platform approach. I and mean, as you mentioned, you could call it a security mesh or a security fabric. But essentially what it means for us is that we have a portfolio of products and solutions, which we natively work to integrate with one another. So as you have point products typically on the edge and within the infrastructure, uh, now you have a, a set of solutions and products that all speak to one another and communicate bi-directionally to be able to share information about security threats or other sort of posture elements within the infrastructure. And so really giving you that uh, homogenous information flow um, that you need to kind of protect yourself from today's threats. Okay, so what's the difference between a Fortinet, what you're calling a security fabric, and me just buying a best of breed, you know, AV and firewall and IPS and so on? What, what am I getting by a quote unquote security fabric? I think the biggest difference between, you know, going out and getting best of breed and having something that's more meshed or a security fabric is the experience. I think, you know, having point products out there gives you a lot of different consoles, a lot of different points where you have to mm. develop integration for or cause two products to become integrated in some form or fashion, where the security fabric is really done for you. It's integrated on your behalf from secure, from the vendor, in, in this case, from us, from Fortinet. And mm. so limiting the number of consoles for managing and monitoring and uh, reacting, all those different things are kind of brought together from us instead of you having to do that after buying a bunch of point solutions. So this is sort of this idea that you might have a cloud service that's doing your CASB, your, you know, your cloud access security broker that's doing content scanning and logging, and then you have an SD-WAN from a different vendor at the edge of the network, and then you have firewalls in the core of your network comes from a different vendor, and then you have a seam that comes from another vendor, and then you have you know firewalls from another vendor in a different part of your network, and then over here in the cloud service, you have a whole different set of plat- you know tooling over there, and your security platform becomes death by a thousand paper cuts. You have different vendors involved, they don't integrate. If you want to establish a security policy, you've got to configure it across. I I mean, there was a study recently and they said something like a typical enterprise IT has like 75 different security tools and nobody actually knows how they work because there's too many of them or something like that. That's that's a really great point, that that Mm. by paper cut. Uh, So essentially, when when you have a multi-vendor approach, you you have to rely on the integration points. Uh, If one vendor has an upgrade to their code, does that break the integration with one or other multiple vendors within your infrastructure? Uh, And so that's that's a big challenge uh, because if it breaks something, something's not working the way it was. And so you're missing out on information. You're missing out on policy enforcement, you're, min- you're missing out on visibility into how things are operated in your environment. Uh, with a platform approach, you don't really have that same impact when you're looking across code upgrades because code upgrades are taken care of in and of themselves through the integrated platforms. And so being able to say, I don't have to turn on connectivity between a firewall and a SIM from a sharing perspective, not just sending logs and doing log analytics, but also being able to identify those particular threats and being able to intelligently communicate back to a firewall, back to an IPS, back to all sorts of other policy enforcement points to be able to now dynamically modify policy to protect against a specific detected threat. All right, so let's dig into some examples. Zero trust, there's a lot of talk about it in the industry. How would Fortinet make the case that we've got an integrated zero trust fabric? Let me just lay down some foundation. So 40 OS is our core product, if you will. Everybody knows 40 OS probably is FortiGate, but 40 OS is actually the firmware that resides within the, the FortiGate, whether it's a hardware appliance, whether it's a, a VM, or whether it's in the cloud and one of those public cloud platforms. And so when we start with 40 OS, we we get everything that's kind of 
pulled together. And so we're converging network and security. And 40 OS can act as that single sort of uh, WAN edge consolidation platform. So you have everything from next-gen firewall capabilities, SD-WAN capabilities, quality of service, advanced routing, all in a single platform at the edge. And so really kind of pulling things together. And so expanding that out into the management plane, we have one management plane that not only manages 40 OS on the edge, but it can also manage the infrastructure behind it. So we're talking things like switch and access points. And so being a wireless controller, being a switch controller, that's all managed, again, through one user interface, whether that's on-prem, you want to run it in the cloud, or you want to have it hosted in the in the cloud environment. So hmm. pulling everything together, and then Zero Trust comes into play when we have that part of our portfolio, what we call for the client and EMS. We add that in natively to be able to communicate not only across the 40 OS sort of architecture, but now we're integrating the mobile edge. And so those laptops, those other devices that are that are managed by EMS, now we can communicate all sorts of posture elements. And so we can start tagging traffic with different elements and being able to use our 40 OS as an access proxy to be able to enforce dynamic security policy across the entire architecture. So, so the challenge here, now I know there are other vendors who are doing this who have you know, you, you put a client on the laptop or the smartphone and then it tags the packets and then those tags are carried through the network and then the devices are supposed to pick them up. And they have massive problems with things, simple things like licensing. The vendor's got some sort of licensing strategy and you don't know if it's going to work or not because the licensing is not obvious as to how it works. And another problem you have is that trying to get all the devices in the path have the same policy because different business units in the company program their device or they acquired the devices from some third party and they haven't got around to updating them and so you're doing half of it you know like are you really able to do all of this in a single platform like can i make this into a single fabric because i'm kind of dubious right sure and uh, totally understood right and so 40 os the beauty about 40 OS is that you, you get all those capabilities I mentioned, the, the SD-WAN, the ZTNA, the firewalling, the, the QoS, the IPS, all of those advanced security capabilities in addition to the networking functions, all of those are included in the same license. And so when you want to add on you know, ZTNA, when you want to turn on SD-WAN, it's, it's a matter of turning it on. It isn't another module that you have to install. It's not another download. It's not another license. And then we extend that when we speak about the framework of ZTNA. There's not a ZTNA license that you have to install on 40 OS, then you have to install on EMS and client. Uh, all those things are, are integrated for ease of use by our, by our customers. We want to make things more simplified. That's what customers are asking for today. Help us simplify our network and secure architecture. And so we're doing that not just from a function perspective, but also at the management plane, being able to pull that in through a 40 manager interface with 40 analyzer on the back end, doing those analytics and being able to really have visibility across the entire environment without pulling up three, four different consoles. And ZTNA in part is also about making sure you've got the right policies and the right policy enforcement po- 